Good afternoon. Thank you for being in the session. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about what Cartesi has been trying to bring and how it is possible to make billion CPU cycles in a single transaction. And um, here's a, sorry, it's going to be a little bit confusing. Here's our agenda for today. I'm going to do a quick overview of Cartesi, uh, um, a little bit of an introduction to how our world apps work and how we can provide the Linux VM, and a little bit of what uh, it's being produced with the Cartesi technology. So this is a sneak peek of what you're going to see uh, in the middle of the presentation. This is a smart contract using the, the Cartesi technology. Uh, as you can see, it's written in Python. It, it is important uh, standard libraries for it. It's doing HTTP communication. It's pretty standard programming. Nothing really too fancy. It's nothing really too blockchain related at first time, at first look. So, Cartesi, right? I don't need to sell you guys on the trilemma and how Ethereum is really good at the security and the centralization piece of it and what comes with it, the limitations as well, because everyone here is trying to overcome this, right? And at the same time, I don't need to introduce to you the limitations that come with the EVM ecosystem. So it's really cool, but at the same time, we don't use the old tools that the software industry have been developing for so long. So the idea is, what if we could go back and have all this knowledge, all this aggregated uh, shared knowledge and complex computations with the security guarantees of a blockchain and good tooling? So the solution is two piece. And thank God you're the audience, because I don't need to explain to you what is an application specific. So the idea here is you have your own rollup for DAP. And that means that you can have a layer N deployment. So you can deploy your application on top of Ethereum, Optimism, other solutions that are rollup and EVM compatible as well. Or even have your sovereign rollup um, if you wish to do so. But at the same time, we don't limit ourselves to be just an EVM. Uh, the, at the core of the Cartesi node, we have a RISC-V implementation, which is a platform processor, but open source. And that means that you can run an OS on it. And we are using the Linux one. So the EVM tooling, like I was saying, uh, it's quite simple, quite simplified. Even to the extent that it helps to secure it, right? But at the same time, you got to make do with whatever is offered. Uh, and it really hinders your ability to scale the content of your application. But with the Linux VM, you can have everything that you had before. So it's basically like you are having the whole toolbox available again. And to build a Cartesi app is really to build a Docker image. So you're gonna start from sorry. You're gonna start from the. You're gonna start from the Risk Five uh, um, image, and you're gonna build and add your custom code. You're gonna start SQL uh, databases if you wish to do so. Uh, import any framework that you wish, and build a Docker image. That's gonna be integrated to Cartes node, um, and that will be enough to be a DAP. So it really feels like you have this, right? So you go back to being able to use your preferred languages, uh, your libraries, your, even that one star repo <laughs> that you just found and apparently just solves your problem. So here is a, a comparison side by side being very generous to the EVM. So especially, more specifically even uh, to the Ethereum EV, uh, EVM. So you can have up to 30 million gas. It's not supposed to, but you can. And the smallest instruction that can do anything uh, on Ethereum is like add or subtraction. So three gas, that's what it costs. So roughly you can tell, like uh, you can do 10 million instructions um, on a single block. Um, and here, we have the Linux being booted on the Cartesi machine. And it only took 36 million instruction cycles. So you're never going to uh, 
put Linux on Ethereum on a single block at least. It's really kind of counterproductive. Makes no sense, right? But here it is, uh, Cartesi limited to 13 seconds just to have a uh, comparison basis um, with the block size of the Ethereum, so 13 seconds per, per block, right? And in 13 seconds, you can have 3.6 billion instructions being run on this node. So it really is a totally different class of application here. And as a human, we have a difficulty to understand the difference, right? So this is what Cartesi can do, and that single square over there is what Ethereum is being producing, has been producing in a single block. It's really totally, totally different scale. So the Cartesi rollups, right? Here's a quick overview of the architecture, uh, quite simplified, honestly. Uh, the idea here is just to show how the components interact. Uh, for people who are not too used, with, uh, used to application specific, sometimes they have uh, this wrong notion that you have a network out there. So what it looks like is really, you're still gonna have JSON RPC connections have, uh, communicating with Ethereum, for instance, for data availability. And then that information is gonna be uh, digested by the A Cartesi node as many as your application have. And then this information is gonna be parsed, uh, delivered by a HTTP interface that um, abstracts away the complexities of it, and we are gonna see that on the code, and which is this. Then this is your custom DAP backend. You can write it as however as you wish. It can be microservices, it can be a monolith, it can be using other applications inside as well. You have access to everything that OS provides you, right? can create files, anyways. And that produces outputs. And these outputs can create interactions with the blockchain itself directly, or you can just output this information on the front end again. So it's really not that mysterious. And here's the thing, talk is cheap, right? So <laughs> onto the code. So to that, to that side over there, we have a simple client API just to encode and sign transactions to Ethereum. It's something that we created just to facilitate the interaction to the first time developer with Cartesi Tech. And we are using hard hat. It's nothing fancy. You can kind of tell just by the way we are using it. And here's a echo application. It's a basic hello world for displaying the code for you. And you're gonna see that we created a notice with the same payload as we sent it. And a notice is just an Ethereum event with a Merkle proof to it. So it's a provable event that happened on the rollup. To this side, you're gonna see that we start on the line fourth, at uh, the fourth line, I mean, uh, interacting with a HTTP MPI that is present on the machine. That's the one I was talking about before. And the only thing that you need to do as a developer is just read one page of documentation to understand all the endpoints, which are three, the four, sorry, uh, to create reports, notices, and new transactions, which we call vouchers, and the other one where you digest new information. That's where the inputs come from. So as long as you parse these new uh, incoming messages, here's the response. You can see that we decode the JSON. It's a request. And you have top, two top levels of, ty of types of requests. So inspect state is equivalent to Ethereum calls, meaning uh, we are making easy for your code to understand that whatever you do there is gonna be reverted back. So it's not committed. It does not change the state of the machine. And the second one is the common one that we are so used on Ethereum solidity, which is the advanced state. And to create a Merkle proof, you need to advance the state, right? You need to change the state of the machine itself. So for instance, you only are able to create a notice from that one. If you try to create a notice on an inspect, you're gonna query the node later, it's not gonna be there. It's really uh, managed by this, you can think of it like an, a hypervisor. And at that point, uh, you just decode the data, handle by the correct, uh, handler, which is the advanced state. You're gonna see there, all, all it does is get the data, create a new notice with the same data, it doesn't even change it. 
hit the, this API, uh, which is the slash notice, and that's, that's it. And you return accept, that's very important, because if you return reject, you're telling the hypervisor uh, something's wrong with your application, and it should throw. It's equivalent to throwing on Solidity, but it can be done on any language. So by, by doing this, uh, you're ensuring the correct um, execution of your DAP. And that's like all of it, honestly. And with that, you get like a full CPU with web server-like uh, properties. So you can uh, further decentralize your DAPs because now you have access to more CPU power and also uh, the ability to import libraries and frameworks that for now you are only able to run off-chain. Uh, you can express more complex logics. So, for instance, it's better for DAOs who are trying to uh, ever increase the safety and um, security against, uh, um, for instance, um, identity uh, attacks. And uh, you can leverage all the stacks there we, you already know. So, let's see the Pox. These are some of the applications we've been seeing be built using Cortezi. So the first one actually happened quite recently uh, is uh, Lisbon. This was one of the um, people that won the track um, on the hackathon, and they created this project called ChangeGPT, which was their idea of importing an LLM to the blockchain, so you have uh, accountability for the execution and the outputs. That person was concerned with manipulation by big corporations, and the effects of, of it on society. So for instance, we know kids right now are using ChatGPT to uh, learn about things. And suddenly they can query like, uh, what is a good liquid? What is a good uh, hydrating liquid or something? And maybe the answer is Coca-Cola. So of course, that's not cool. So it's good for you to have the proof of the execution. It's verifiable that that was an output, so from there you can start a process of um, ver uh, verification where was, what did things go wrong? Where did the companies manipulated the model to have that kind of output? And, but the cool thing is, it's an LLM running verifiably, and it can output information back to the blockchain itself, not being really an oracle. Then we have this other one, which is cool as well, which is computer vision on chain. So the project itself was about a, a clocking clock out system to that. So they ensure that government officials are not trying to manipulate their time. They are not taking vacations in the middle of the week or they are not being laid often. And what he does is two things. First, he created a machine learning model um, where he can verify whether or not the image is being spoofed. So the same image over and over again, or maybe a silicon finger. But at the same time, using OpenCV was really quick to identify whether or not that is the identity of a certain person. And that wouldn't be possible before because OpenCV is huge. Uh, and trying to port that to Solidity is like madness. You wouldn't do that. So here we have like a uh, the uh, Rollup Lab is a community uh, sourcing site for projects using uh, Cartesi. You can check and see all other kinds of examples, so games, DAOs, uh, DeFi uh, applications that use Cartesi right now. Um, most of them are hackathon projects, but there's still some being developed as a actual project. And this week, we're gonna have like East Global Paris, and there we are, on, we are on a track as well, so people can try to hack with us. There's gonna be prizes um, available. And finally, one small announcement, which is the Honeypot DAP. So we are launching on mainnet uh, this DAP because, of course, it's application specific, right? So we need to have a DAP to showcase that we are mainnet ready. And the foundation of Cortezi created this DAP to prove to the community and to ensure as well that the rollup itself is safe. So the foundation is gonna be doing some deposits to this, to this DAP and inviting hackers to, start to try to steal it. More information you can find here. So I thank you guys.
for being here. I hope you enjoy this presentation. But before I go, one more thing. So I, quite a, a few months ago, this guy went to Twitter to ask a very interesting question. If Ethereum is the world computer, why haven't we seen Doom running on it yet? Makes no sense, right? So one of the collaborators of Cartesi took this challenge on and he ported Doom to the Cartesi machine to prove computation on chain as well, if you wish to do so. Thanks again, guys. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, do we have any questions? There we go. It's about this Doom example. How much do I need to pay to, to play it for minutes or, or hours? Sorry? How much do you need How to pay? How much do you need to pay in gas or fees to play Doom for hours on end? <laughs> so this example right now is only, uh, let me go, ah, it's, uh, it's off. Anyways, this example right now is only running on the Cartesian machine, totally off chain. It's not DAP, really. But if you were to try, trying to turn into a DAP, it's really about like how you want to go about it. Do you want to do the play session first and then just running on chain? Because really, it's a real time game, right? So it feels weird to play on chain. It was more like, OK, I can compute this game on chain if you wish to do so. I can verify it. I've heard they even brought a laptop. So oh, uh, yeah, yeah, true, true, true. after this talk, you can try it for yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look for this guy here. He, he's, uh, he has a Please, Felipe, demo raise your hand. For, for people <laughs> to try to check it out. Any other questions? Thank you for the presentation. Um, it looks super good and almost too good to be true. So I was just wondering what are the downsides or like the current downsides compared to other roll-ups? Mm, I'd say they're kind of ecosystem related. So even though these projects sometimes they can be adversarial to some extent, they kind of like are complementary to each other. And Cortez itself thrives from that as well but not to the same extent. So if Optimism does something really cool, maybe Arbitrum can really take some um, boost from that because people can associate them both and things go that way. But by doing something so different as Risk Five, I feel it's more difficult for Cortez itself take um, some of these energy, I guess. It's, it's especially because it's application specific as well. I, I feel like it's more ecosystem related than it is technology related. I Not see. to say there is no difficulties using it itself, right? It's quite new technology. But I feel most of the people in the ecosystem are looking to EVM still, looking to Solidity still. Nowadays, a little bit more for specific languages for defining uh, circuits for zero knowledge. But people don't want. They don't even know it's a possibility to code in Python for blockchain. I see. So in terms of security, you think it's somewhat like almost the same? Same, same. So to explain this, uh, we have the RISC V implemented on Solidity as well. So whatever you compute off chain, we can compute on chain. And to be fair, we actually do. So part of our test to verify that the version on chain off chain is the same is to run all the risk five acceptance test on the on-chain emulation as well. We don't do literally on-chain because it makes no sense, right? We just run the EVM itself. So we make sure that it takes the same amount of steps, that it generates the same types of proofs for all the steps. It's a really slow process, actually, uh, whenever we run those. But um, so the security is really there. It's kind of the same. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Gabriel.